this is Al Fritch at EarthHealing.info. Uh, we are here nearby our site of office, and it is in Ravenna, Kentucky, and they're getting ready to dedicate a hydropower plant. And we are going to talk a little bit about the renewable clean energy that comes from the hydro uh, power. And uh, this we will hear from people that are at the dedication ceremonies and we'll think about it in our own lives as how we can use the more clean energy in order to bring down the climate change that we face at this time. Bob Fairchild, who was uh, one of the leading people in setting up the hydro plant here, and you called yourself, uh, uh, what was the title again? I was a construction site supervisor here. Something. And uh, he did a great job, too. Uh, tell us something about uh, what you're doing. You're going to move on to other areas. After this project, which is basically done, we're going to, our next project is going to be up at Heidelberg, which is lock 14, the uppermost. There's 14 locks and dams. Uh, after that, we have a license for 13, which is... So you're moving of, up and down the river. Up and down the river. And then we're hoping to also do one at 11. So we're looking to do four total. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, tell me, uh, is this going to be a major uh, operation for... Uh, uh, Kentucky's uh, clean energy? Uh, well, it's a pretty big project. We make enough power to produce, for, to provide, to, with this project, about 1,200 homes on average. Oh, really? Oh. And we, we feed the rural co-op. It runs across the river and runs up to a substation. And it's Jackson Energy and it's and a part of the, the co East Kentucky Power System. So, great. So, well, keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Yeah. Before I get started with some remarks, uh, everybody's got one of these at your seat. This is a souvenir to take home. This is a, a slice of the power cable that runs uh, from there. Each turbine generator, and there are five, have three of these uh, coming out of them. And we have a total of about a mile of power cables, of the, this size power cables running, running uh, in that plant over there. So it's, it's really good to see all of you here today. I am David Brown Kinlock, I'm president of Appalachian Hydro. And many days I wondered if this day would ever come. And uh, just to let you know, this project took 16 years, 16 years to happen. Uh, we started planning this project back in 2005. And uh, my son's here, and he was just one year old. He's now six foot two. He was just one year old when we started planning this project. Uh, but it took us seven and a half years to get a federal license to do the project. It took us two years of post-licensing work to be able to get permission to start construction. And then the construction took us three years that we've been working on. So it's a big deal. Part of the reason it took us so long to build is weather delays. We've got a lot of challenges. We measure things in one-year floods. Water should only be that high once a year. And so we've been over three years, so we should have had three one-year flood events. We've had 23 one-year flood events during that time. All to be topped off in March of this year with the flood of record. And where you all are seated, there's be about six feet of water above your head right now. That's how high the water was out here March 1st. So we've had our challenges, um, but this project I want you to know is a project of firsts. This, was the, this is the first new small hydroelectric project to be built in Kentucky in 94 years. Okay? There's one, there's one state official that told me he didn't think that, that there would ever be another small hydro project built on this river out here, past the one at Lock 7, which we also run. And all I can say is, he's now retired and we're now operating. <laughs> so there, there have been many, many firsts here. Probably what I think is the most important first is, this is the first new hydroelectric plant in the United States that uses variable speed technology to control the speed of the turbines and to get a lot of extra power out of it. 
this will be a technology you will see a lot more. This is what all the wind industry use, but it's just now being introduced to hydropower. So Kentucky's last in a lot of things, but when it comes to small hydro, variable speed technology, we're the first. Okay, another first is this is the first project in Kentucky to use submersible turbine generators. Okay, and for flight, it's their reintroduction back into the U.S. market. This is their first project in the United States. They've been doing it around the world. So we appreciate what Xylem and Flight's done for us. Um, another uh, uh, thing that was mentioned a little bit earlier was, uh, and people don't realize that this is the first new plant in the United States to use polyset on all the metal surfaces. That doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah. It's a coating developed by NASA that instead of just going on top of the metal, it actually chemically bonds to the metal so it doesn't flake off or chip off and it will last a lot longer. You'll see everybody using this, not just NASA in the future. One of the most important pioneering things that we did here was our financial partners. The major financial partner that's gone so far with us is Berea College. Okay, this is a true innovation. And if you don't believe me that this is an innovation, past now, there are a number of other colleges trying to do hydroelectric projects, and some right behind us Notre Dame, uh, University of Pittsburgh, just to, to name a few, that are doing hydroelectric projects following in the footsteps of what Berea College has done, and they are a wonderful partner to have. I also have to mention two other major financial partners, Hard Scuffle, which was our tax equity partner that has been wonderful and incredibly patient. Nana Lampton's here from, from Hard Scuffle. And the other is Community Ventures, who has helped out. I believe that this is their first hydroelectric project. They do a lot of solar projects. So uh, it's, it, we, we have been blessed with a lot of firsts. And I also want to thank a lot of our loyal partners. You've heard them mentioned before, but i got to mention them again because they stuck with us through all of this. Right Concrete, who put in about 3,000 cubic yards of concrete. And uh, Doug was just telling me that there was 153,000 pounds of rebar put in that project. It's not going anywhere, folks. <laughs> it's here to stay. Uh, Rymar Electric, we had two elect we went through two electricians that did not work out. Rymar stepped in, picked up the pieces, and did an outstanding job for us. Modern Welding, Modern Welding rep is here somewhere, but Modern, yeah, back here. Uh, they did all the steel fabrication on this project. They're out of Elizabethtown. They're actually all over Kentucky, but the project, the group we worked on, are out of Elizabethtown and they did a marvelous, incredible job. Another one is Air Hydropower that did our hydraulic system. And of course, I have to mention Kleinschmidt Associates out of Maine that designed this whole project. And then there's one other partner that I have to mention that, believe me, this project would not have happened without them, and that's Jackson Energy. Jackson Energy, I, I've been doing this work for 35 years. I have bought with a number of electric utilities over projects like this. We went to Jackson Energy, and you know what their response was? What can we do to help? Oh, I, it was a miracle to hear those words, and they've been true to their word. They have been incredible through this whole process, and I can't say enough wonderful things about the help we've gotten from them. Now that's the electric utility side. The other part of that, that's what's on the other side of the fence. On this side of the fence is recreation. This site has been closed to the public for years and years and years. But through three important partners, this is now being turned into a park for everybody to use, but especially the folks in Urban and Ravenna that are right close to here. And the first one I have to mention is the Kentucky River Authority, which is here because they, they are the ones that actually control, and this property is owned by the Commonwealth of Kentucky, but it's their leadership that made this possible to open this site up to the public again. We've got fishing, uh, parking lot for fishing, and steps to go down. We have a canoe portage. We have this picnic pavilion. Um, and the second, the second partner in this is Estill County. 
Estill County stepped up. We're, we've got an agreement that's about ready to be signed. It's just being checked over by the state right now between Estill County and our company. We're going to give money to Estill County, and Estill County is going to maintain the park. So it's a good partnership where, where we provide the resources and the county keeps the park up for the public. And then the other partner, the visionaries, and a number of them are here today, is Kentucky Riverkeeper. And, and River Keep, Kentucky Riverkeeper have been the ones that have been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And, and finally, we are going to have the Kentucky River Water Trail that through here that's only, what, like the 25th nationally recognized by the National Park Service water trail that we can have canoeists start up in Beattyville. I can start up in Whitesburg if they wanted. And canoe, because we're putting in canoe portages, all the way down to Carrollton in the Ohio River. So uh, it's the leadership, the visionary, and I will, I will call Kentucky River Keeper the folks with the cattle prod because they keep prodding this to make it happen, and we really appreciate that. So to sum things up, uh, to address climate change, uh, hydro is, hydroelectric is going to be playing a very important part, but especially small hydro. And small hydro has an important role to play. People don't realize it, but there are 75,000 dams in the United States, but only 2,600 of them have hydroelectric on it. That's only 3.5%. Okay? So what's happened is there's been cherry picking. All the nice big sites have been taken. So what's left are the smaller sites like Lock 12 here. So if our country wants hydroelectric power, and, and we do, uh, you go to Congress and there's not much bipartisan up in Congress, but when a hydro bill comes up, it passes 96 to nothing in the Senate because everybody's behind clean hydropower. But if we, if we want that clean hydropower, we're going to have to go to smaller sites like this. And the Matilda Hamilton Fee plant, it stands as an important model, model that will be used by the rest of the country of how to use the right innovative technologies combined with great construction partners to develop a viable and cost-effective hydroelectric project. There will be people coming here from all over the United States to see what has been done here in Estill County, Kentucky, because of the innovations that are here. We face a lot of climate challenges, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be honest, hydro is not going to do the whole job. It can't. But we can play an important role, and we hope this plant is an important model going forward in helping uh, deal with climate change. Thank you. Well, we have uh, seen a dedication ceremony and we're thinking about hydropower and how it applies in America and the great potential that we have ahead of us. Think about this. This is an important aspect of the cleaning up of America and getting ready to answer climate change problems. Hydropower. This is Al Fritz at EarthHealing.info. Come and visit us sometime. <laughs>